On this beautiful day, let's take a look at a different PTC controller than the Skahoy series, like PTC Extreme and whatnot. This is the RP150 from Panasonic. It is their flagship controller to control Panasonic robotic cameras, but it's missing something. It cannot connect directly to a video hub or an ATEM switcher or whatever you have that you want to control if you uh, want to bring up a preview in front of the PTC operator. Skahoy controllers can do that natively, but a Panasonic controller will need something else. Now, um, we have a great collaboration with Panasonic around this, and one of the more curious things in our products is that we have hardware that can connect to this one. So, like the Ethernet GPI link, for instance, or you can take the Crosspoint 24, which is sometimes used as a button panel for the RP150, so you can recall presets, change groups, select cameras from buttons, in combination with the touch screen in this nice product. Now, uh, with the GPI link, Ethernet GPI link over here, we have GPI inputs. And as you might know, if you have been in broadcast for some time, that typically means wiring over to the controller here, and that is one way to go. But the Ethernet GPI link also has something we call virtual hardware components, and with those, you can basically do protocol conversion, you can listen to settings on the RP150 and based on changes in those settings such as camera selection, group selection and uh, so forth, you can activate um, triggers on external hardware and you have the full Unisketch universe at your feet doing that because we can connect to Kumo routers and uh, ProBell video hub from Blackmagic Design, ATEM switches, so forth. In this video, we'll look at how that's done, but let's first take a look at the uh, operation. So I'm now a PTC operator. I have a PTC camera somewhere. I can select them. We are currently on, at camera number one, and you can see camera number one is on my screen. I now select camera number two, and the video hub is now instructed to change to camera number two. This happens because the Ethernet GPI link listens to the RP150 and as this change happens, it sees camera number two is now selected over here. It is selecting input source number two on the video router. Same goes for number three and number four. Number five, no, not so much because we have only four sources right here. And that also means when I change to a different group, because that's included in this system as well. I have a group selector right here. If I change to group number two, I would now recall camera number 11 when I uh, press 1, nothing happens over here, I have only 4 sources, my video router will not allow me to select a non-existing source, just so you know why that doesn't happen. So I go back now to group number 1 and we'll focus on these. So the question is, how did we do this? And um, you'll see in my web browser right here, I have the configuration for the Ethernet GPI link, and it's all about the virtual hardware components you see on uh, this side of the controller graphic. Um, let me just click this and you'll see that the page scrolls down to, um, to uh, this virtual hardware component. So um, let's look at what, what we're seeing right here. I'm just briefly gonna disable group number two so we have a little better chance to actually um, see this. Okay, so a virtual hardware component basically means this. Um, you see the first line, we select a function called group uh, port select, port select on the Panasonic RP150, and we set the value one. So that's for virtual hardware component number one. Then the next action we put in the list of actions in Unisketch is a synthesized trigger. And the trigger type that comes out of this modifier in the middle is binary. Binary means that as we see the port change to one, then we will we'll generate an act down event in the system based on the previous action, which is the port select here. So then the third action you see is Blackmagic Video Hub route input to output. So this will effectively route output number two to, sorry, input number two to output number nine. See the pattern now, okay? Because you go to the next one, synthesized trigger will generate a binary event based on the previous action that is set 
to camera number two. So when camera number two is selected here, we have a act down event that will make the next action, video hop route input to output, select input number three for output number nine. So this is output number nine, and all these are the inputs to the video hop, okay? So this is how you set it up, basically matching. It also means that you can have your camera sources numbered any way you like on the RP150 and on the video router, as long as you're ready to go and mix the, um, the, the numbers between these two systems in here, okay? So synthesize trigger is something that reads the state of a previous action and generates a trigger that is, is uh, channeled into the next action in the controller. So the way we do the group changing, because this goes on, by the way, for all the cameras, the way we do the group changing is, and this is what I just disabled. So I have another list of actions over here that is essentially listening to the same things for group number two. And with group number two, I'm still listening if the port is one, that the port means camera number in the RP150. If it's one, then instead of selecting input number two, I'm going to select input 11, because that is the camera in group number two on camera number one. So the change over to group number two is a matter of a state change in the controller. And if you have um, seen some of our training videos about Skyhoy technology, you know that states is like pages you can um, select for a controller. And it basically moves the whole controller over to the second column on this web page you're looking at. And let me just browse down to um, the virtual hardware component I'm using to do this detection. You can see, same thing again. I'm listening to the group select parameter in the RP150. If it's one, I generate a binary trigger that will set the state to zero. If it's two, I'm generating a binary trigger that sets the state to one. So in this way, the group selector will also move the controller forth and back between these two columns of control. And in that way, we are um, managing sets of virtual triggers uh, for the RP150 to work with any video router or video switcher you could imagine. Anything in the Skyhoy universe could be wired into uh, the Ethernet GPI link like this and create control from here and into your other hardware.